Hey guys, I wanted to share with you just some data on the autoimmune diseases. A lot of times it's really confusing if you have a problem with one of the autoimmune diseases. I just want to give you some insights on my opinion about it. First of all, what is an autoimmune condition? It's basically a condition where your body has made antibodies against itself. So you have this self-attack. So you've got immune cells that are attacking your own tissues. And it could be any tissue or organ or gland or even a hormone. So alopecia, for example, that's autoimmune of your own hair. Okay, so you have hair, spots of hair where it's falling out. Ankylosing spondylitis, that's of the joints. That's a condition over time where a person literally turns into a stone. Every single joint becomes frozen. It's terrible. Diabetes, well, one of the causes of a certain type of diabetes is autoimmune of the cells that make insulin, pancreas. Uh, Graves, that's a hyperthyroid. It's too much, it's a hyperthyroid uh, um, autoimmune. And then Hashimoto's is a hypo, slow thyroid condition, um, both autoimmune. And then you have lupus, which is the skin and the joints. Uh, multiple sclerosis, that's of the brain and the nervous system. Uh, myasthenia gravis, that's of the thymus gland, that's a little immune gland on top of your heart. Uh, and then we have rheumatoid arthritis, which is a very, really tragic um, uh, destruction of your connective tissue around the joints, and it can deform the joints. Scar- sarcoidosis, that's of the lung, so you have these little tumors in the lung that you're, these antibodies are attacking. So, so those are just some, a small list of a sample of different conditions, right? So I have my own theory about this. There are theories floating around relating to um, um, the vitamin D deficiency because the vitamin D receptor has been hijacked by microbes, okay? So they use a certain medication to try to help that. Um, also microbial um, invasion of a, like a virus or a certain microbe that can cause this. That's another theory that's floating around. That's, so they could put people on antibiotics for a long term, okay? But there is usually one drug that they usually always use. It's for inflammation. It's, it's a steroid. It's prednisone. Why, and my question is, why do they use that? Well, what is a steroid? It's an adrenal hormone, okay? So if we turn into Frank Netter, Cyclopedia of Endocrinology, page 84, talks about cortisol. That's, that's cortisone or prednisone. Cortisol is a, an anti-inflammatory. It's also part of the, it controls part of the immune system, so it controls the white blood cell. So if the adrenals that produce cortisol are burnt out in a condition called Addison's, you don't have an immune system. It's gone. So that's the danger of the not having adrenals. So this is what it says right here. It says when cortisol is like way too high over a long period of time, which basically is stress-induced, you get a breakdown of intracellular barriers raising susceptibility to immune weaknesses. Okay. So what does that mean? It means that the adrenals are countering stress. And when you lose control of the adrenal, you become more susceptible to viruses and bacteria and immune problems. Okay, that's what that means. So every single case that I've ever seen with MS in the last 27 years, and there's been a lot of them, they've always tell me the same thing. I say, when did you get this condition? And they tell me when they got it. I say, what happened just before? And there's always a stress, always. Loss of a loved one, a divorce, uh, a serious trauma, a pregnancy. A lot of women during pregnancy, they can develop conditions. But here's the interesting thing. Autoimmune diseases turn off when you're pregnant. So if you could just want to stay pregnant all the time, you, your autoimmune diseases just go in remission. So there's a self protecting mechanisms so these antibodies don't destroy the fetus. So that's interesting. So I believe that autoimmune, this is my own theory, comes from a weakness within the adrenal system induced by a stress state. So here's some things that I would recommend to do. I would, whatever triggered it, you have to handle that stress, right? You have to improve that situation. So if it's involved with a stressful job, you know, get another job fast. Go for long walks. When people are under stress, they tend to gravitate to pleasure foods and junk foods, right? That's a big mistake. 
The other thing that you want to do when you have inflammation, especially like the rheumatoid arthritis, you want to really increase your potassium. Now, in the in this other videos I talked about, I talked about you need 4,700 milligrams of potassium. With these conditions, you need about 5,500 milligrams of potassium. Why? Because potassium decreases the need for adrenal uh, function. So you have more potassium, the adrenals can be chilled out and they can work better. And the other thing is the adrenal glands dump potassium, so you lose your potassium with stress. Um, so we want to support the adrenals. That would be my suggestion with, with these conditions. So that's my theory and I'm sticking to it. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Please click the subscribe button and I will see you in the next video.